when subhash fell down and he lost his consciousness and he woke up after an hour and when he woke up he didn't remember anything about kota career but his mind opened in a style do it was blabbering amma uh, don't hit me let me go play so his mind was there and he was playing hello sir welcome to film companion south so two months ago had someone come to you and told you that this malayalam film that you were making would go on to resonate with so many audience transcend boundaries would you have believed them uh, no i would love to believe that but yeah but any uh, i don't know uh, uh, but we knew it will connect with people but this much reception we didn't expect to mm. be frank <laughs> so when did that thing start when did you start to believe that okay this is going beyond kerala how did that happen i mean like do you remember a day or maybe third day of the release of fourth yeah, day the third or fourth day i started getting videos from about theater response from chennai and madurai and also that's when we realized it's going beyond our control and the film is much bigger than us Mm-hmm. yeah and how have you been processing the success man has it been like a bit overwhelming it is of course it is overwhelming we are not prepared for this and a lot of interviews and a lot of uh, meeting a lot of people like getting a lot of calls and yeah so it is pretty overwhelming but yeah you get only once or twice this in a lifetime yeah. so yeah you cherish it <laughs> yeah so you had stated in a previous interview that when uh, when you started researching for the film you went and met the real manumel boys and they you had spoken to them individually like you interviewed them individually and you got different perspectives of the same incident different stories different memories what's that one fact what's one incident or one anecdote that shook you the most the main layer meta layer i found uh, soon after talking to the boys is like it's a story about an atheist becoming god mm. that's subhash so that is the thing that struck me so i made the story around it mm. so okay. that was a main layer or tool that i like to i got to start off writing so that incident that subhash after being rescued that he you know people came and touched his feet a lot of people like uh, because of that you went and you reverse engineered and you kept that that one dialogue of subhash asking kadavul nayan yeah yeah exactly it was reverse engineered yeah of course of course it was because and in real life he was an atheist and he didn't mm. believe in god or miracles or anything i'm not i'm i'm just talking about god i'm not talking about religion yeah 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 so yeah so yeah and and after that he started believing in things otherwise it's very uh, what you say very i don't know ra- rationalist Hmm. Yeah, it's good to be a rationalist, but sure, there are like you. I mean, you are a rationalist. Of course, I am. Okay, okay. <laughs> but of course, I believe in uh, miracles, or I think I, I know there are things beyond our perception. Hmm. And uh, through whom did this this incident come to you? Did Subhash tell you this, or no? Uh, uh, one of my friends, Sean, is also the producer of the film, so he knew these boys, and they're from like the same hometown. So he told me about there is one incident like this. Uh, so i was like immediately okay let's go meet them then i mm. went to kutan's house so most of the boys were present there present there so i spoke to them so yeah from, from hearing from them i understood it's a, it's a, it's a large movie and it's a great story and it has to be told people should know about this so that's mm. how we got sir yeah now you stated in a previous interview that if it was your own character you mm. would have complete control over it yeah. like you could create characters if you didn't like a character yeah. you could just eliminate yeah, them yeah. and you know shape the story the yeah. way you wanted to but yes. that is something that's a luxury here right the, you mm-hmm. you can't afford to no. do it here because it's a real story and it's real people mm-hmm. all of them uh, all of them are still alive so how would you make uh, how would you make that you have a lot of information mm. how would you say okay i'm going to take i'm going to incorporate this in the script and i'm going to leave it out for instance the the way the police treated the mm-hmm. boys or the fact that it is subhash's the belt that he borrowed from his brother that's actually saved him these are things that you told not actually communicated mm. in the film right yes, yes. so how did you filter the information filtering of the first of all yeah of course i took all the interviews and so it was a long interview and if you show everything in that it will be long movie so the editing out incidents is a, and of course yeah, we have to show 11 people itself i can't mm. cut down on them because yeah. cutting down them it's easier to shoot with four people the same story but it mm. don't have that 
uh, it will be uh, artificial and mm. and it, because it's are like real boys and they will be watching the movie with me yeah. and they will ask me what is yeah, answerable to them yeah. where am i if they ask me i have nothing to say and it's a real mm. thing so 11 boys are integral to the because each one did a tiny uh, bit to, bit, yeah, uh, to save, save something so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so that was um, so that is one thing and so if and, and so it's a real story so uh, omitting things uh, was like pretty hard decision hmm. to make and we have shot also like a little extra of uh, but most of the things were, which was edited out was like before the fall like before the trip okay, so okay. yeah and and after the trip it was very crisp like most of the thing we shot is there Hmm. and and a lot of incidents have been omitted like uh, for example they met with an accident on the way back back home, home. yeah so that was like i, don't know, I, I thought it was too much to to drag and like oh, oh, we are in the last reel and already is rescued yeah, yeah. then have to and so uh, and that is the that is been omitted and uh, and every year after uh, the incident the, on the same day someone gets sick someone meets with an accident so that also so that also like, i don't think it will stretch it too much and to keep the narrative uh, speed and the tightness so i to make a lot of things so was this filtering happening during the writing process or did you like form a structure okay i'm going to have these things and then began the writing no, how did that i wrote it very broadly actually okay and then on shoot uh, because it's a very emotional driven and a visual subject so on shoot we decide okay now we reached this much crescent or then i think let's go straight to the other thing oh. so we'll skip so a lot of things were filtered out during shoot because that's also that's where we are really seeing the movie for the first time oh. how people behave and how notice the yeah. atmosphere so a lot of decisions were taken during shoot a lot of things were added also during shoot okay oh, like some things that were added for example the dialogue prasad says like i won't take the car and uh, even if you burn us alive so that mm-hmm. was added like right on screen so i thought like near the scene when i need a, a small high there so that's why it was added on okay time. see one of my favorite perhaps the favorite moment in the film for me is when sudhi comes and tells uh, kutan that if you don't go down i will go down mm-hmm. you know that moment to me was like i had like goosebumps while mm-hmm. watching that scene because it's it captures the friendship and you know the human resilience and how far these these crazy people are going mm-hmm. are willing to go to say the is that something that really happened or is that something that you created uh, see lot of dialogue lot of thing there might have lot of dialogues between them in real life what to do they remember we will really they, they remember they okay. have told this story a million times so they know mm-hmm. exactly and there are a lot of so so that lot of dialogues between them lot of confusion between them it will obviously happen yeah. so that will kill the flow so that's mm-hmm. why like we sometimes one boy's dialogue is the collective expression of all the boys mm. so that is what is there if i don't know you get like say everyone will do the same mm. so that is a collective expression of the boys he represents the, like boys at times so that's how i approach lot of the dialogue so it's a dialogues are very less in compared to my compared to my first film first film yeah. yeah in second half they are like practically like yeah, the dialogues are just very functional they are just very functional dialogues yeah. because a lot, of, a lot of dialogues will like kill the and i think it is a visual travel and it should keep on going so a lot of the dialogues even one boy says it represents the whole as a filmmaker are you a visual guy or or a verbal guy I'm, i think I, I, it's it's a blend of both i think because my first film was very verbal, verbal. and this is very visual so i think both are very important and verbal what you write and even if, if it's visual also the the tiny bit of dialogues you use should be very precise and on point and <coughs> coming to exaggeration or say cinematic liberty how would you trudge that thin line because it's obviously a realistic it's a it's a real story and it is a very realistic film but it's also very cinematic i mean the way the characters behave or the sheer you know visual presentation of it so how would you you know balance that line of exaggeration if you wanted to exaggerate something a little bit how would you uh, find moments to exaggerate so uh, that's what like you know the film is also there's a structure in the film and so on uh, the structurally if i look the, the subhash falls right at like around 20 to 27 minutes like in between the the 20 minutes like he falls so um so that is the structure so uh, you uh, so at incident like incident like uh, there will be there are like so i'm like putting out basically there are like three acts 
but what i do is like i i uh, and i'm not an academic film guy i never been to film so i don't know the structure so i may, i found out my structure myself mm. so this is what i approach is like there are three acts then i subdivide the each act into other three acts then for each uh, each act then each act you need 10 pointers then you get 90 pointers if you have 90 pointers you have a film so that is how i approach okay uh, so in the like 90 10 10 then you get a hyper you get a bottle like movement you get a high movement low you sometimes you deliberately take the space mm. low for the upcoming event high to yeah, you know, to yeah, get the high yeah. after so you the before the scene were um, uh he there's in like if you don't get down i will go down there was a mm. low which was engineered to get that high mm. how much time did you spend writing i spent like we spent uh, one one and one one and a half years one and, and only we could, we could only come with two drafts and we shot with the second draft Uh, because like, our arriving at the first draft was like very long uh, how do you write do you have a team i have a team like i have a team forth? i have a, my uh, co writer is binu balan and he's mm-hmm. also my chief associate director actually he came up with the dialogue ni arangile ni arang so uh, the, how we work is like we why i do the structure i do the main scenes and he just writes it for screen so i went there like so i'll be the insert and cotton decides to go in and that's a scene and then i go back home and come like next day morning i read it and i found this dialogue here it was brilliant so mm-hmm. it is a very collective effort mm-hmm. nice and there is also that little surrealistic nature to the film right yeah. where you are mm-hmm. you know the inter- the second half opens with mm-hmm. the kids running and mm-hmm. him entering a drum and getting out that's quite mm-hmm. surreal and mm-hmm. i love that cut between the kid mm-hmm. you know uh, diving into the, uh, the lake yeah. and what it mm-hmm. i don't want to reveal it yeah, for the okay. telugu people who uh, haven't seen okay, okay. so there is that surrealistic nature mm-hmm. of the film also mm-hmm. why did you feel the need to have that layer i mean like my interpretation is that mm-hmm. in a way to capture the, the you know the journey of their friendship mm-hmm. but beyond that how did you interpret it uh, my my inspiration to do that was like uh, when i speak to them they always emphasize how they how their childhood was they run around naked and they jump into the river they swim till like sunset like the whole day they spend on the river and they're all good swimmers and um, so and also uh, and they like to go fishing and they'll steal mangoes and like and they do I mean, so that was like i it really struck to them it struck, uh, like struck me and um, I, and and um, what else was uh, when subhash fell down and he lost his consciousness and he woke up after an hour and when he woke up he didn't remember anything about kota he didn't know he was in yeah. kota he didn't know what to do but his mind opened in his childhood it was blabbering am i uh, don't hit me let me go play so that was also an inspiration for me to go back cut back to the so his mind was there okay. he was playing with his friends when he was down okay. there yeah that's fascinating man and i wanted to know this did the interval point come about naturally during the writing process or was it something an editing call no 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 interval was in the writing so okay yeah and yet because that uh, it is engine so you can't in edit uh, it will be hard to pull off so interval we had to like so it is very count subhash is gone hmm. it, it is an unknown factor where he is then you give the back story of the cave okay then we will have an interval you set up the stakes stage and set up the stage these are the stakes mm-hmm. then we take a break Yeah. Do you like the concept of interval? To be honest, as a as yeah, no, no, I don't like the concept because uh, I don't uh, like to address film first half mm. good, second half it is bad. The film should be a and mm. should be a collective like it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a single experience. Yeah. But now, uh, unfortunately, our films are uh, the format is that way. So we need to have an interval uh, yeah. punch then. So if you definitely say what is the interval punch interval make out like it happens so this is a sadly sadly or like well, I think it's unique to us and yeah, I yeah. think it, so the uniqueness so also we should cherish interval breaks on your entire structure right the structure that you just said mm. the three acts and yeah, yeah. it breaks it must be so that's why there is yeah. like uh, three acts within an act uh-huh. yeah. okay I I really wish I mean like it's this is a hypothetical thing but I really wish I had seen the film without interruption mm. because that mood would have been i yeah. personally felt when the lights came up in the theater with that mm. shot and rainy film i was like i was like oh, i hate this man i'm like because i wanted mm. the story mm. to yeah. be it's a film should be a continuous experience yeah and the mood also is yeah, captured yeah, right yeah. that whole claustrophobia 
and see yet another favorite moment of mine my i would say my second favorite moment is yet again once again it's with friendship only is when all the friends try to stop the rain water from going yeah. down it's almost like these friends are trying to do the impossible they are going against the nature yeah. by trying to you know block the water mm. how did that is that also a real incident it is that is also it happened it happened it oh my god the, so yeah the uh, i didn't know, like the all the incidents like were real only the, i made it like the highs and lows uh, they really did that for him and uh, then, you know how you can't imagine how cold the water is like in kodai um and uh, and especially the character sudhi and he is like very ocd and like he, yeah yeah like, like he is very uh, adamant on that and he is the one who first like goes and like does that so that was i heard it from them so that is a real thing okay yeah i know obviously you have spoken you and production designer has also spoken uh, in depth about you know the creation of the caves yeah, and yeah. all i wanted to know from you how did you you know fix the lighting pattern because it's a cave and you stated that you made it a little brighter than what the actual cave looks like because obviously it had to be visible i'm asking this question because all the light sources they had to be in sync with the production design right so yeah, yeah. was it the lighting pattern was it running in your head yeah, while the set was being built of course uh, of course we have shaiju kalid the great yeah. dop so uh, mm, uh, the set the brief for the set was like i should say this uh, i told my production designer ajayan that wherever i pour water it should come to the hole so that was one brief so that's why like it so we can't control water no yeah, so yeah. wherever you uh, like turn on the rain or drains so, like there are a lot of pipes cleverly hidden mm-hmm. then to make the flow of the water and so so it is engineered that way so everywhere you pour water it comes to this hole mm-hmm. so that was the brief and we achieved it that way and then to for the cave to look real uh, you need like a natural you have to replicate natural mm-hmm. daylight and we lit it according to the day time So when they get in, it's around 11:30, 12, like nearing lunch time. So it is lit for me, and it's a, there's a hard source, okay. and um, so so the lighting makes it also real. And we used a lot of lights. We used like we had to get a lot of lights from Hyderabad also. Okay. Yeah, so a lot of sky panels like all over from South India we had, and a lot of uh, 16Ks and. so and we had like a mixer a light mixer outside the set so in so uh, there is a shot like uh, bef- just before the rain after the hearing the thunder they look up and there is a pull back shot and we actually turned down the lights in shot using the mixer so we changed the texture of the light uh, the specularity and the contrast we shift in shot and we also shift the temperature oh. so yeah and we were very excited to do that <laughs> yeah it sounds very exciting to hear <coughs> how did you see when there are 11 people there are like at least like you know the boys are there then there is uh, you know uh, george marian's character then there is a guide there the po- how did you figure out the staging i mean ho- who would stand where yeah. this is something very obvious that often goes unnoticed and if it goes unnoticed it means it's it's done well so how did you figure out the staging like literally who's going to sit where that part yeah that is a very hard, that was a very very hard part of the shoot uh, shoot uh, blocking people so and it is also happening in a continuous time in a single space so one dialogue you say you have to move there so then the for the next shot i can compose the other guy with you so that was uh, pretty hard to crack so we took we took our own time to like arrive at it because it's more like a, it's 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 a stage mm. the cave is the stage so it's a play so everyone has to tell the dialogue move there like turn this side it has you have to like already know what you want next before like after this what comes then only you can like place the guys where you and mm. where you have to sit so you can't like make him sit in too far away for for the like maybe after two scenes he might have to come say this so mm. that was like more of a theater uh, so it we consider it as a stage mm. and being a whole being the center yeah 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 oh sorry okay what was the toughest shot for you if you could point out something that you struggled to crack <coughs> lot of shots were like I <laughs> now but looking back like lot of things were hard to shoot. Uh, mm, we made special rigs for a lot of things. The telescope rigs which go inside the hole and come back. We don't have a rig for that, so we made it. We attached to the set. We had like overhead slide, o- overhead sliders. Lot of things were made for for the movie, and the tougher shoot was the inside the hole. So that set was 40 feet high, and we had three pieces 40 feet, 40 feet. 
three pieces. So, so I've been getting down and then it is very dangerous shoot also. It's like 40 feet high and if you fall from there also you can die. There are a lot of metals and all the things like it's electricity. You know what, how a film location how is. There are a thousand the camera, How would you mount the camera when it's high? Yeah, there is like, yeah, so we, uh, it is high, so we made a platform which was around uh, 20 feet high. Then we put a tra track in it. Then we had a jib on top on the track. Then we had the full arm length, I don't know, I don't know 20 feet, 40 feet, I think. Then yeah, so then we reached, uh, then wow. we tracked like that. So one side of the hole is open for us to shoot. Mm. And sometimes we used, uh, um, sometimes for the hole, uh, for inside the hole we used uh, Venice 2, so which can, which has the Rialto system, which can, we, where Venice we can, two yeah, Venice 2, Sony Venice 2, where we can uh, detach the sensor and the lens and the recorder will be, with the, uh, so it makes it more mobile, so we used it for the head mounts where you can oh, see POV shots. Uh, POV shots and so we don't have to sacrifice on the lens and the sensor size. Also it had a native ISO of 3200 which helped us to shoot oh, in the dark. I didn't get the uh, so it also has a native, so it's a bit technical. So it, uh, Please uh, explain. Uh, also has a native ISO of 3200 uh, 3, so which, uh, which is better to shoot at in much more darker spaces. Oh, okay. We will get to retain more data. So, um, so that was that. So we used the uh, also technology like if that if that system was not there, we had to take this chunky camera inside, and, like take like we couldn't go so much personal inside the space. So yeah, a lot of and that was a pretty hard shoot. Another factor is nobody knows how that cave sounds like, right? You have references, okay, visual references and all, uh, references and all okay. I went to the cave, so I know. No, the down when he yeah, gets yeah, down, yeah, that yeah, nobody. Yeah, that is an unknown. Yeah, so how did you explore that, that soundscape? So inside the cave was like truly unknown for all of us. So, we, my brief was like it should feel claustrophobic of course, but it shouldn't be too claustrophobic for the people like like they don't, and you don't annoy the audience also. Mm. And we use subsonic frequencies to like which can't be heard, but it, it will falls on your tympanum, but it affects you. The audience? Yeah, it, you can't hear it, but it's there. How? So it is, you can't generate subsonic frequencies like, so we are like, a lot of we uh, we use uh, reverse shepherd tones, which goes like um, uh, shepherd tones always goes up. You feel like it is always going like how they did it in Joker. Okay. So that is a shepherd tone. There's a siren for like a right, thing. Right, right. So we use the reverse, so it continuously goes down. Okay. But so it's it all very subtle, unrest. and it is under the score, under the sound design. But it is there, and it, it certainly affects the people. And my sound design, my brief was like I need a sound of. Ru roots g uh, growing underground there is no sound for that but you can imagine a sound for it roots growing underground roots growing underground so if you imagine it you can imagine a sound for it yeah yeah but, but there is no nobody sound. has heard it or nobody in the sense uh, national geographic has it <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so there are like a lot of the abstracts were very brief but mm. yeah, the sound design really helped to transport the people inside the game no, how did you learn about these i mean like not as a filmmaker mm. but as a as a film enthusiast or someone, mm -hmm. how did you learn about these, these, these terms like frequencies and how they no, affect no, the as audience? As a filmmaker, if you are mm -hmm. a, a filmmaker, you are a student of film, so it is your duty to like, to know all the, so film is a collective art, so there is like all departments and there is like visual and sound, music, painting, mm -hmm. fabric, costumes, fashion, everything is there. So you should know, you should be a jack of all trades to, <laughs> to be a director, I think. This is very interesting because I read somewhere that Gaspar Noé, the, mm. the French filmmaker, he had used the particular frequency in his film, Irreversible, mm. that French film, to make the audience feel unrest. Mm. And we also made a new instrument for the film. What is it? I forgot the name, excuse me. Basi, where is the instrument? And some, some. <laughs> Uh, what was it intended to so be? Where, where, where was it used? It was used in a lot of scores, like uh, it makes nightmare sounds, it makes like very unsettling tones. So that is a special instrument for that. So we made it, my friend Sushin was watching it and some, some of my friends made it and uh, yeah. <laughs> so you really had fun doing, playing around with? Yeah, sound is very important in the film. You always, always say that 50-50, yeah, yeah, you always say that, yeah, no? yeah, so audio is 50, video yeah, is 50. Yeah, and yeah. Sound is, uh, you know, so my designer Shijin and my sound mixer Fuzzle, they did a fantastic job and hmm. they, uh, so the sound is also a bit exaggerated. So uh, in that cave, it, it is like there are a lot of plants, so there is, there won't be that much echo or river. Okay. But we had, we exaggerated a bit to take you there. Okay, mm. okay. So okay. there is a, sometimes it is not a realistic film, it is fully no. manipulated <laughs> cinematic film. 
Yeah, but at least like the emotion at the core of it yeah. is very realistic, mm-hmm. and you know all that. It's these are not blemish. These are not what you call decorations, right? Half of the things that you just said, I don't know whether a common man will notice them, but he certainly he will experience them unknowingly. So I don't think it is. I wouldn't agree that it's not a realistic film. <laughs> yeah. So and because you had worked so hard on the writing table, did editing get easier for you or? ஒரு <laughs> 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 everything is in place but the pace and everything uh, to remove a scene put back that scene the trims and everything so we every day we sit on it we sit on it a lot is there any scene that you wish if made it to the final cut but didn't no i think no, so you are happy with, this is the director's cut yeah yeah this is the director's cut there is because the there is no studio cut <laughs> because the studio like the producer is also <laughs> saubin and there is like mm. um, okay did you did you get to see the the telugu version or monitor the dubbing process no i couldn't monitor the dubbing process but i'm sure it will be fine because i heard the songs and i saw the trailer so i have both approved that so i think mm. yeah i think okay. it sounds fine but i don't know the language but it sounds fine for me and my i cross checked with my telugu friends so they mm. also said it works okay perfect finally i want you to recommend me some underrated and unseen malayalam films to tell you not the popular ones okay uh, because i'm pretty sure the cinephiles are have, have already caught up with you know the bangalore days or oh okay or, or even like you more mean popular the, are like you talking about the recent films not recent recent films you are like say from 70s or 80s if you had to draw the underrated malayalam ones not underrated uh, i don't know like but most of the films hmm. i say we were like a, they are all like not underrated they are all celebrated movies i hmm. can say or maybe those that haven't you know crossed boundaries i think most i think they have the films i think they have crossed boundaries technically the like, older ones also oh of course they are like okay. uh, went to criterion collection cans yeah. busan and b and all has adur gobal and adur gobal there's a lot of okay. kg george and a lot of that is yeah, iragal is a nice movie which like, one iragal okay with Vict- uh, praise alenge victims or whatever hmm. by kg george and that is a great movie i can't say it is underrated people have mm-hmm. celebrated that movie then uh, vidayam by adur yeah, gobal yeah. and mamuti and i don't yeah <laughs> you have to say, have you, you have to watch uh, danny in my tv chandran it is i don't think it daddy. is danny 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 okay uh, it is also mm. a nice movie mm. okay. and uh, by that's by mamuka and a lot of films are there <laughs> i don't know, i can't like pick one okay, it's okay. a very okay. i get it it's a very tough question tough for question any female to, to answer uh, out of the ocean of movies yeah. out there to pick yeah. you 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 had stated that Malayalam cinema is something that at least you you have always operated with constraints and a lot of limitations mm-hmm. see the success of this film it's it's a, it's a huge validation and i'm pretty sure your next film you're going to get everything that you ask for at least the logistics if you want uh if you want a very expensive camera you're going to get that mm-hmm. how do you plan it's not about what you get to shoot no it's not the it start from the thought process how mm-hmm. large i can that you have to like train yourself to or, or unlearn mm-hmm. to do like uh, even in shooting manjumal I, i didn't uh, i didn't have any obstacles yeah, yeah, getting any thing uh. but that is a mental thing that is okay. a mental block of things like not mm, the availability of resources Res- of okay. mm. or finance so <laughs> are you someone who likes working with those of course i like it movie is a spectacle it should be a spectacle and it should, should have a story it, it will have a story and but in that it's a visual medium you get 2 hours mm-hmm. a certain st- uh, amount of time and the 2d space so it's that in that what you can do is the thing no okay yeah. wonderful all the very best i'm pretty sure everyone i mean like even telugu people and tamil people are looking forward to your next so don't take that pressure simple one only you just delivered an industry hit so no pressure all the very best thank you